this video, I want to talk about data ranges. Now, your sheet might be massive, right? And you may have several sheets. And you can name certain areas um, if you want. So, your, yes, your sheets are named and your workbook is named. But you can define certain areas within your sheet. And that might help you with some formulas and stuff later. So, it's really simple. You just select the area that you want to name. So, I'm clicking and just dragging here. And I want this whole area. Because I might want to add some stuff later. But for now, I want to name this area. And I can name this... Um, I call it the sales, let's say. And then hit enter. And now that has been saved. And if I happen to be on another sheet somewhere uh, in another area, I can simply come back here and it will bring me directly to the sheet and to the area that I've defined as sales. It's almost like setting a bookmark within Excel. Uh, there's another way of doing that. Um, so I'm going to bring you now to formulas and bring you to the name manager. And from here, I can delete any existing range. So if I wanted to delete that, I would just hit delete. And if I wanted to define it from here, I can and give it a name. So here I can just call it sales. And the, what you can do from here that you can't do from the name box up there is that you can tell it where you want the sheet. Um, uh, <clears throat> so if you want the entire workbook uh, to be covered, um, so it would, it would mean that A2 to H, wherever the end is, in, in all pages of the workbook would, would be that range. Or you can specify which sheet that you want. And you can also leave comments here. And if you wanted to redefine the range, you can redefine the range. So a few options here that we, we didn't have in the name box, all right? But it's essentially the same idea. And I can edit it. And I can delete it like as I did before. So that's about all you need to know for now about named ranges. Next, I want to talk about sorting and uh, grouping and summarizing. So with the same information here, I'm going to select all this information. And the first thing you need to know is you can sort this. Now, I can sort it by uh, quarter. I can sort it by city. I can sort it by state. I'm going to go ahead and sort this by state. So I'm simply going to find the sort button, which is in data. And from here, rather than just uh, have it sort by the, f the first thing that it wants to, I'm going to ask for the, the big sort menu. And I'm going to specify that I want this sorted by state. <clears throat> and I want by values. And then I'm going to go OK. So now it's got everything in California first, and then Oregon, and then uh, whatever uh, WA stands for, Washington, I'm assuming. All right, so now that's been sorted. The next thing that is really neat is I can, I can add columns up very quickly and easily. I would be able to insert a new row here and do some math if I wanted to. However, I want you to know that you can quickly and easily go to this subtotal button here. And here it asks um, what you want to group by. So state is exactly what I want. And do you want to add? Do you want averages? Right? I'd be able to do average, I'd be able to do count, max, min, I'd be able to do any of these uh, popular functions. But I'm going to go ahead and sum and add them up. And I'd be able to add many things if I wanted to. I'd be able to, here it's asking net profit. But I could probably go ahead and say, give me sales, coupons, ingredients, give me everything. Give me all of those totals. And then I'd be able to hit OK. And now quickly and easily, it's created a new line. It's inserted new lines that end after each state and the numbers. And again, whenever you get these number signs, it simply means your column isn't wide enough. So I simply select the columns affected and I double click any one of them and it will automatically adjust all of them. So now we have these fancy little subtotals all the way through our grouped data. Very, very handy. The other thing you need to know about this is it's created an outline here. Um, and here it's showing you all three levels. And by all three levels, let me just show you here. So this is showing you everything. If I only want to see some, now it's only showing me the totals for each. And then this one here is only going to give me the grand total. Very quick, easy, neat little feature that management may want to see in order to, to compare. Now, if for some reason you wanted to get rid of this, if for, for some reason you don't like it and you don't want it anymore, you want to, you want to ungroup, um, you can do it quickly and easily once again. You can go ungroup and you can ask for ungroup.
Now you'll notice the outline is gone and uh, it did ungroup, but I still have the subtotals. So if you want to lose the subtotals as well, there's an extra step here. You have to go to subtotal here and you have to ask to remove all. And now it got rid of the subtotals as well. So if for some reason you want to get rid of those, that's how you do it. You can go to ungroup and it ungroups and you get rid of all of your outlines. But if you want to get rid of the subtotals as well, you need to go one extra step, all right? You got to go to subtotal and remove all. So there you go, uh, named ranges, data groups, summaries, uh, outlines, grouped data, uh, very handy, um, stuff you could use on a very regular basis.